Is it gossip? No, he doesn't talk trash. Did you say this was a daily podcast? Hello, my little peanuts. It's me, your host, Lance Bass. This is the Daily Popcast for March 20th, 2023, 2020, 20. Look at that. That's kind of fun. Um, all right. Obviously, it's been in sync week. We've done all the guys. So yes, it's been a crazy, crazy week, especially with everything going on, trying to schedule all these interviews. All of them got all out of place, but we got them all done and I'm super excited. So for our very last one, please welcome to the show. Mr. JT himself, Justin Timberlake. How's it going, my man? <laughs> I'm good. Thank you. But you, you, be, you, man, you, you're, you're really good at this now. Man. <laughs> I've been doing it for a little while now, Justin. Um, it's, it's been crazy, yeah. but it, it's, it's exciting because I've, I've never been able to have a one on one with you. So I'm, I'm super excited to, to get into it. It's gonna be fun. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. Can't be there in person. Obviously, everybody's dealing yeah. with what they're dealing with in the world, and yeah. um, so I hope everyone's safe out there. Yeah how how um, are you in the family coping? Are y'all uh, safe? Where are you at? I, I'm I'm uh, I'm in Montana. Mm-hmm. We're in Montana. We're just kind of like posted up and uh, just trying to you know just trying to uh, do our part. Um, uh and and yeah i mean we're keeping ourselves entertained there's a lot of lego building going on right now i can tell you that i bet oh and and how's the family everyone's good everyone's good thank you very much yeah Mm -hmm. nice i love i just saw uh either either jesse or nikki deloach posted something where they were having like a birthday slumber party i love the fact that Nikki Deloach is still in your life this many years later and such close friends that she could do something like that with your wife. I think that is a testament to your friendship. Yeah. Yeah. She's they're actually her and her family are actually up here with us right now. Oh, nice. So. Oh, there you go. Love yeah. That. Nice. Uh, slow yeah. party. Yeah. Um, all right. <laughs> yeah. So, so let's get into it. So congratulations. 20 years later, no strings attached. Um, and, Somehow people are still liking it. So <laughs> let's talk about it. Uh, this era was, you know, a little, uh, crazy for us at this time. You know, we were going through a lot with our label and Lou Pearlman. Um, what does the no strings attached era mean to you? What did it feel like going through that? Um, gosh, man. I mean, there's so many layers mm-hmm. to that whole thing. I mean, obviously you just touched on it. Well, first of all, congratulations to you as well. I mean, it's, uh, but I, I, I don't know. I guess I feel like, um, yeah, the, it, it, it felt like just that album alone as a part of our, you know, career, um, you know, obviously it had so many, it had so many layers to it. I mean, we were fighting for, I mean, we were fighting for our right to continue to, move on as a group and you know we were being you know we we had someone who was trying to like basically take our name and i I, the way i sort of looked at it take our name away from us Mm -hmm. and i remember i remember being in court and i remember coming out of out of that and uh, you know i remember then all of us kind of taking that opportunity when we felt like you know, when we, when we did get the news that we were going to be able to move forward and that there was a settlement that was going to have to be made, that we were all, I think all of us were so elated. I know I was just to continue to move forward together. And I think a lot of that energy really went into that album. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was a lot of serendipity to, you know, obviously to the, you know, our first single being, you know, bye, bye, bye. You know, that we were breaking free of, of, of the situation we were in. I think we all kind of felt the, the, the serendipitous nature of that. But I don't know. It was, it, you know, I guess another layer of it is remembering the time of, remembering the era itself, you know, when TRL was this huge sort of, it was this massive, you know, thing. And, um, I remember the, the week of being there. 
standing next to, uh, you know, all four of you and looking out over Times Square and Times Square was, was shut down and, and there was all, you know, it was just, it just looked like a huge block party. Um, and, uh, I mean, I, listen, another layer was that I remember we had just found out there was this little thing called Napster that was, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was, that was coming out. And, you know, we, I remember all of us kind of looking at each other and, and, and saying, you know, this, uh, our industry is probably going to change. We didn't know exactly how, but, and then that week was just crazy. I'm sure you remember. I mean, it was just a blur. It was like, we were here and we were there. We were, they were just, you know, because at that time we were we were so heavy into promotion. What would you think is the biggest difference, you know, from, you know, our era 20 years ago, 25 years ago to compared to, you know, doing it right now in 2020? What is the big difference in the music industry right now? I mean, obviously the 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 consumption of music is completely different. It's it is more of a you know, everybody you get to be your own sort of tastemaker in a way, which is great. Um, but yeah, I think looking back then and seeing how that part of it has, you know, progressed and how the people who basically have paid attention to where it was going have become incredibly, I mean, obviously incredibly successful. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's kind of trying to explain to someone and I don't know, maybe you've, maybe you've had this experience too, but trying to explain to someone what a Virgin mega store looked and felt like mm -hmm. is, you know, for, for somebody that, that is, you know, in the, of, of the next generation, like trying to explain to a millennial what a Virgin mega store was, right. you know, it's, I, I can't imagine it's probably, you know, I think back, it's like our parents trying to explain something to us. Right. Um, <laughs> it's like back in our day, we, uh, we would wait around a block to wait for an album. And by the way, you're the first, uh, you're the first person that actually got Virgin Megastore, right? We've been calling it Tower Records all week, but yes, it was Virgin Megastore uh, in Times Square. Yeah. Well, remember, well, remember the Virgin Megastore was in Times Square mm -hmm. and then Tower Records, uh, was, was, Sunset Boulevard right. in Los Angeles. Yeah. So. Yep. We all got that one wrong. Uh, what were your first impressions of, and in fact, when did you first meet Lou Perlman? I, I never knew that story. What was, when was the first day you met him? Well, the first, the first time that I remember, I, th I, I think you spoke to JC about this. I think the first time that I had really met Lou Perlman was with JC. I don't remember meeting him before that. Was it before uh, NSYNC got together or was this, you know, because of NSYNC that you and JC met him? I remember, I remember J so JC and I were on a television show together. Uh, I was part of a new class that kind of came through and, and after the show ended, I think, you know, uh, we were both working with Robin Wiley, who was, who she originally worked on, uh, Mickey Mouse Club as a vocal coach and would kind of, she, she also was a, she, back at that time too, she, we would ba basically remake popular songs, um, and perform them on the show and she would do all these vocal arrangements for them as well. And after that was over, I remember my family and, and I think JC, they, we all kind of kept in touch with Robin. And so we were, you know, through, through a series of events where I think JC had gone out to LA and he was making his way back across the country and he stopped off and stayed at my house for a little while. And we were, we basically fell into this rhythm of going to Nashville to work with Robin where we were both, you know, just spending more, just getting more hours in the studio, which is all we really wanted to do at that point to learn more about songwriting and production and, 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 and also, you know, really kind of find our own voices. And we ended up, and I remember we ended up kind of, we would, it was kind of a free for all. We were just kind of creating as much as we could. And where the, where the in sync piece of the puzzle came in for me was, I think Chris and I, uh, had the same sort of commercial agent that worked out of Atlanta. So she, um, I think, I think there was a call from him to her saying, I'm trying to put a group together. Do you know anyone through the agency? 
And so she immediately called my mom. And uh, weirdly enough, JC and I were together at that point working. He was, he was writing songs. I was, I was learning how to write songs. Um, we were kind of singing songs together that we had worked on in the studio. And, and we, we got that phone call and it just became this thing like, should we both go down there and see, go down to Orlando and see what it all means? Um, and I remember the, the phone call. I, I think my mom had gotten off the phone with Chris specifically and he's like, this can seem really weird, <laughs> but I'm, but I'm putting together a group and there's a guy here who's who's willing to basically fund the whole thing um and and was kind of pitching it as as this is also something he has done for another group as well um but weirdly enough i think we were it was it was it was confusing and and sort of it was a peculiar thing um because at that time it was either like it was either you know R and B, like, you know, um, I know we've always cited Boys to Men as a big reference, but at that time too, they were they were huge. It was either that or it was like, you know, the Seattle sound, like Nirvana mm -hmm. and, and Pearl Jam. So it was. I remember it being a peculiar thing, but we we went down there to check it out, and and then through sorry for the long winded story, but through that through that series of events. That's kind of how we met Lou, and yeah, nice. that, that was that was our first that was our, sort of our first meeting with him. So, with all this coronavirus craziness happening right now, one of the big things the doctors are saying is you need you know try to get at least eight hours of sleep mm -hmm. a night. That'll help your immune system and right? your like mental health with this too. Uh, yeah, a hundred percent. Everyone needs their sleep, and that's when mattresses come in handy. And our lovely people at Helix is helping us out. All right, this is so easy. So they have this quiz that takes just two minutes to complete and matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. If you like a mattress that's really soft or firm, you sleep on your side or your back or your stomach or you sleep really hot, that's me. With Helix, there's a specific mattress for each and everybody's unique taste. So I took the quiz and I was matched with the Moonlight. Yeah, I, I got the Moonlight too. Yeah, oh yeah? Yeah. That's interesting. Maybe we should just sleep together. <laughs> Uh, so the, uh, yeah, the moonlight mattress, because I wanted something that felt, uh, soft, Me but not like medium. too soft. Yeah. yeah. Also, like I do sweat if I have heavy blankets on, like I need something that really breathes. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you don't need to take my word for it. Helix was awarded the number one best overall mattress pick for 2019 and 2020 and by GQ and Wired Magazine. So just go to helixsleep.com slash pop, take their two minute sleep quiz, and they'll match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. They have a 10 year warranty and you get to try it out for a hundred nights risk free. They'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it. But you will. So Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash pop. That's helix, H-E-L-I-X, sleep.com slash pop for up to $200 off. If you need some help with a new routine, Sakara can help you eat better and feel better. I love this service. So Sakara is a nutrition company that focuses on overall wellness, starting with what you eat. Their organic, ready-to-eat meals are made with the powerful plant-based ingredients, and they are designed to boost your energy, improve your digestion, and get your skin glowing. The menu of creative chef-crafted breakfasts, lunches, and dinners changes weekly, so you'll never get bored, and it's delivered fresh anywhere in the United States. Along with delicious meals, Sakara also has daily wellness essentials like supplements and herbal teas to support your nutrition. To boost results, try the best-selling Metabolism Super Powder, an all-natural remedy for bloating, weight gain, and fatigue. So Sakara has received rave reviews from Vogue, Goop, and the New York Times, and more, and of course, the Daily Popcast. I really like this stuff. And right now, Sakara is offering our lovely listeners 20% off their first order when they go to sakara.com slash pop or enter code pop at checkout. That's Sakara. S A K A R A dot com slash pop to get 20% off your first order. Sakara dot com slash pop. Let's get healthy, y'all. 
you know, we, we got connected through Bob Westbrook, a vocal coach, uh, that you, you know, knew right. from the Memphis area. Um, do you, I forget if you were actually on the call with their mom and Lou when you called us for the first time. Um, I don't, I don't remember that, but what, what were you thinking when, uh, when, when you contacted Bob to try to find the last member? Right. Well, I remember that we, you know, Chris and JC and myself through, I guess, I guess Joey had known JC a little bit before from the television show. You know, I think we were all kind of, of, of the mindset of like, you knew what auditioning was about and you knew sort of like, we were all, I think we were all just trying, we were all like eager to look for work. And, and, and I remember when Joey got into the group, we were, we were looking for a bass singer. I mean, that's, that's specifically what we were talking about because we really, something that I remember Chris was a part of the Hollywood high tones and universal Mm -hmm. studios. And, uh, and, and funny enough, I remember we all used to make jokes about that, that like JC and I were, we had worked on the Disney lot and, and Joey and, you know, Joey was a part of the, the, he was the, what what was that review? Do you remember Um, what it was called? It was the the Beetle, Beetlejuice uh, graveyard review. Right. Mm-hmm. So, and, and that was on the Universal Lot. So we always used to make jokes that by the time Joey got into the group, it was like two of us from Disney and two of us from Universal. <laughs> like, you know, so I, was, I remember we used to make jokes about that. But, um, um, yeah, I remember, I remember us saying we, 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 we were very, um, we were very focused on being able to perform a cappella. That was something that was very important to all of us. And, and I think it was one of those things where my my mom said, well, let me just take a shot at calling Bob Westbrook, who you mentioned, obviously, was my first vocal coach um, in Memphis. And and uh, <laughs> what I do remember from the phone call, and maybe you remember this, too, is that my mom called him and he said, oh, my God, I have the perfect guy. He's a true bass. Weirdly enough, his his last name <laughs> is Bass. Um, and he said, and his mother will never let him do it. Yep, that's what I heard. Because <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> she didn't even and, tell me uh, the first time y'all called. She never even told me. <laughs> y'all had to call twice. He never told you. Not the first time. This is the second time y'all called is when I was actually at the house, and I'm like, "What's going on?" And then she had to finally tell me. So yeah, I'm like, uh, "Okay, let's go check this out. What's wrong?" Oh, uh, that's well, you know, you know, Mama Bear was being <laughs> oh, protective. Yeah. It's like, what is this? Can't, I, can't knock her for that. Yeah, no, true. Um, uh, speaking of like Universal Disney, two guys, Universal two. If Universal played Disney, just you two against you two, who would win in a dodgeball fight? In a dodgeball fight? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you two against Chris and Joey. Oh, we smoke them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think my money's on y'all too. Actually, I mean, are we. I mean, no concept. Yeah. Okay. I like it. I like it. So if you weren't in the entertainment industry at all, any, any area of the entertainment industry, what do you think you would have wanted to do in life? Uh, if I, if, if like, like no yeah. part of the entertainment industry, not even, no, not even a grip or anything, just nothing in entertainment. Oh man. Um, oh gosh. <laughs> I, I, I took a moment of silence because I just saw a very dark future. No, um, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's like, it feels like, uh, like a Christmas story where you go back and you're like, um, <laughs> all I see is I, darkness. I'd be, a real, I'd, be a, I'd be a real Ebenezer. No, I, I honestly, you know, something that I think because I grew up watching my grandfather build houses, I, I, I always said if I could have, gone to school to study anything i think it would have been architecture mm-hmm. oh, that'd be um funny. yeah i think you'd actually be really good at that so yeah. I, I i don't know um um but i've just always been in i've, I've always really admired i've always kind of seen everything as architecture you know i remember when we would when we would have ideas for putting our stage together you know and and creating you know the fantastical world that we'd want you know, I mean, if you look back, you know, these worlds that we'd want, uh, you know, our fans to see and experience when they saw us live, because it's such an important part, you know, um, I don't know if you look back at, if you look back at the pop odyssey tour, I mean, that, 
that stage was a crazy piece of architecture. Yeah, it was nuts. We had every bell and whistle you could you could name. I mean, it was basically like it was basically like going to a theme park. Yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. And that was one one of my well, my favorite parts were definitely creating you know our shows and creating the videos. I loved building those things out. I think that was where we all kind of worked the best, and because we all had different crazy ideas. And of course, the more successful we got, the more we were able to implement the things we've always dreamt of. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just, I, I loved sure. when we all got together for, you know, and we would put these shows together less than a month. Right. <laughs> so we, they, they came sure. quickly. Yeah. Um, uh, was there anything that was, what was the most difficult part for you, uh, in during the NSYNC experience? Like what, what's the thing that stressed you out the most? Uh, well, it stressed me out the most. Um, besides Chris, I think, I, I, you know, you funny enough, you kind of touched on it was just that we always felt like we were up against a schedule, yeah. you know, that we always, that it was like, okay, we've got a month to put this show together. It, I mean, it, we were, we were, it, you know, it was almost like the bigger things got, the more pressure we had to sort of outdo. And, and, it was, and, and, and by the way, like, I think we probably put that pressure on ourselves as well. Cause we always wanted to continue to progress. Um, but, uh, I don't know. I, I guess, I guess the, uh, I guess, the, I guess the schedule, yeah. I mean, the schedule always felt like pretty intense when we were, when we were on tour, you know, it was never, I remember all of us. I mean, I, I remember all of us, there were times when, when, when I remember all of us looking at each other, like I'm exhausted. Yeah. You know? And, uh, and then we get out there and, you know, obviously the, the, I feel like the, the love we and support we got would would get us through. I st- I still find that to be true, but I think I don't know. I think the thing that stressed me out the most is just that we always felt like it, it just always felt like um, it felt like we were behind the 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 schedule. Yeah, that yeah. it was that that the schedule was always dictating a lot of what we had to do. Right, and in um, hindsight, and we were all ple- you know if. <laughs> If you look back too, I think we're all pleasers too. Like we always yeah. wanted to do a great job. Yeah. You know? And we always had you know, um, people breathing down their necks too. I mean, there was so much competition out there. I think that's what kept us, you know, motivated and going and just wanting to work so hard. Looking back, um, would you change anything? Would you change, you know, our schedule or give us a little more rest? Uh, is there anything that you would want to change? You know, I don't, I, no, I don't think so. I think. Uh, you know, in the same in the same breath of you know talking about how it was all sort of hectic. I mean, it was exciting. You know, it was fun and and um, and we were young. <laughs> we, could, we can handle it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I don't know if I can handle it. Yeah. <laughs> um, that that type of schedule, but um, um, yeah. I don't know. It was. It just felt like a. It, it did. You know. I'm sure a lot of people say this about the time that they were, you know, that age, but it, but it, but it really did to me, it felt like a real golden era just, just for popular music. You know, there were just so many different things going on. Um, you know, it, it, um, it was, it was, uh, it was, it was, a, it was a really fun time. Yeah. Really fun time. Um, let's go through these tracks on no strings attached and, uh, we'll quickly kind of get your thoughts on each of these songs and something that just comes to you. Uh, start with number one, bye, bye, bye. Um, what do you think about that song? <laughs> I mean, that will, you know, between the two singles on that album, I think will be the most, you know, I think people, when they have sort of word association with us, it's either bye 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 or it's gonna be me. Mm-hmm. Um, Do you remember what it was um, like working in the studio with like Christian London and Andreas and Max? Of course, yeah, I remember. It was um, well. I remember that. I remember the. Do you remember the first time we went over there? Uh, yeah, the first time in Sweden, of course. Yeah, I just remember they sent us over there for a week, and they were like, "We just need you to get one song," and we had like. We recorded I Want You Back in like a day. Mm-hmm. Like it was like, it was, oh, it was done. And I remember we had like, that was, that was one of the most fun times I remember as we were just starting out. I know this is not no strings attached specific, but I remember, um, I just remember we were like, oh wow. So now we can just tour Stockholm for like 
five more days. I know. And what a great place to chill because I remember we would like sit at McDonald's and look how gorgeous everyone was in Sweden. Like everyone was. Yeah. And it was the first, yeah. it was the first yeah, place that, I had a Guinness beer too. Cause I freaked out. Cause of course I was underage in America, but there they'd let anyone drink. So I freaked out, went to a bar. I'm like, I'm going to be able to drink underage. And, and I, and I was like, they're like, what do you want? I'm like, uh, a Guinness, like who orders a Guinness their first <laughs> beer ever. So as I, as yeah. I sat there for an hour to let it set and then chewed it down, I had to pretend I liked it. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. 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 I didn't. I I didn't know that. I didn't know that was your. I yeah, I think my, I, it might have been me and I think it was just me and Chris just kind of ran across the street. And we're like, I'm going to a bar. I can actually get you know a drink. Um, all right, let's go to Space Cowboy, um, Mr. J C Chazay. Got that one with Miss Left Eye Lopez. Uh, what did you think of Space Cowboy when you first heard it? Um, well, I remember that we were. I remember it to me. I, I was. I mean, JC was really on a roll with uh, his songwriting at that point. Yeah. And, um, and, uh, I just remember, I, I remember hearing that song and thinking to myself that it would, it was going to translate for, for our fans at that time, that it was going to translate so well live that, that it would be such a fun number to, uh, to, to perform live. Whose idea was it to do the mechanical bulls? For that I performance, think that was Joey's, wasn't it? That sounds like Joey, yeah. <laughs> it, if it wasn't Joey, it sounds like a Joey idea. Mm-hmm. So. Then Johnny Wright, of course, uh, introduced us to Just Got Paid, uh, Teddy Riley, Johnny Kemp. Um, what do you think about that that remake? Uh, I mean, well, that love with R and B group, that era of Jodeci, and then um, cited them as an inspiration for for us, and obviously, you know, with Black Street being so popular as well i think we're all kind of like i was just excited to work with him and and i i I remembered the song but um but obviously like going back and listening to it and doing the research like that's a classic yeah johnny kemp that's a classic oh yeah um next track it makes me ill which was one of my top faves um kenny burris uh wrote this one do you do you ever run into kenny burris at all now after the fact and talk about this (laughs) You, you know, I haven't seen her in a long time, but I remember, I just remember how sweet she was and how her, well, her and Shakespeare on that, the, they were on that role where they had produced, um, they had produced, uh, no scripts for TLC. Mm-hmm. Like they, they were, and, you know, and there was kind of, we, obviously we all, we all love TLC as well. And having, I don't know if, I don't know, this may be a little bit of a chicken and egg thing, but I don't know if Left Eye came, if she ended up on Space Cowboy first, or if we ended up with the producers who worked with TLC first, but the, I don't know, there was something really exciting in the air, and, and weirdly enough, it was like that, you could look on, you you could go to TRL every day and see both of our songs on the, on the, on that TRL countdown. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. I guess it kind of speaks as well to that to that era where everybody was kind of working with everybody, yeah. which was really cool. Yeah, um, and it makes me ill. Is one of those songs I I really wish we could have released that as a single. I thought that would have been just I don't know. I think it would be a great radio hit. Yeah, I think I agree. I agree with you. At that time, it would it, it definitely, you know, I I I think it had that sound that was that was. It moved, this was, that was one of the songs that I felt like moved a little bit of the style of our group Mm -hmm. and distinguished us as a group that to do, to go outside of just like what I think everybody at that time would call bubblegum pop. You know what I mean? Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, and I, and honestly, I think it was pretty, I th- I think if you look back to it, it probably was pretty, you know, even if it was a small seed, it was it was probably pretty informative into what became more of our sound for the celebrity album. Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, which which had a little more R&B influence to it. Um, yeah, we started getting away from but, the doom 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 to you know a little different beats at that point. Right. Well, well, and even so, with bye bye bye, I don't know if you know this. But um, I remember talking to Christian London, and and 
um, asking him, I said, oh, the drums remind me of that Jay-Z track with Ja Rule. Mm-hmm. Can I get a? Yeah. Because it had the same, it had the same, like it had that same bounce to it. And he was like, <laughs> you know, I'm going to butcher the Swedish accent. He was like, oh my God. This is exactly the song we were listening to when we made this beat. And I was like, by the way, that's the best Swedish accent ever. It's so good. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, sorry, Christian Lennon, if you're listening, that wasn't in any way, shape, or form to try to like poke fun at you. But like, I, I, I remember, I remember the, I remember that our sound kind of started to change. And then Rami came in with it's going to be me. And it just felt like, you know, I do remember that we were on the first album, we were working with the same hit makers as a lot of the other groups and solo artists at that time. So naturally, like the drum sounds would start to sound the same and the, and the, and the keyboard pad synth sounds would start to sound the same. And I felt like I, I just, you know, being such a music nerd I, myself, I, I think I remember feeling a, a, like a sense of pride for us that like, even though we were working with some of the same kind of hypnotists, they were seeing us as our own kind of group and somebody that kind of, that a group that could cross over um, to, to, and, and, and play with different styles, yeah. you know? Um, so, so yeah, I mean, I felt like, I mean, I remember, I remember the first time, I don't know if you remember this, but we ended up in studio with, a long time ago, when it's gonna be me came out, we ended up at the same studio as Timberland and Missy Elliott. Mm-hmm. And I remember Tim coming up to us and saying, you know, like him being a big fan of "It's Gonna Be Me" that song specifically. And and uh, you know, I mean, whatever. Fast forward twenty years later, he's probably my as a solo artist. I mean, he's my most prolific collaboration mm-hmm. that I've that I've had. You yeah. know, so. I don't know, man. It just—it's kind of—it's kind of uh, it's a small world after all. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Like it's—you know—it's kind of one of those one of those things. Um, when did you first realize yeah, remember, that uh, you and Timbaland would be such a great match? What was the first thing you worked on? Well, I, well, also too, I don't know if you remember this, but you know, I, when we were in Orlando, kind of getting our act together as a group and trying to get our performance chops up. You know, I mean, I was riding around playing the Super Duper Fly album as much as I could. Mm -hmm. Like, that was the one, you know, I remember that that album, like, changed the way I wanted to to hear music. And um, I don't know. He was just always somebody that, that I was a big admirer of. And, you know, obviously, when I did my first solo record, he was he was at the top of the list of people that I wanted to collaborate with. And it just worked out the, 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 you know, when we, when we got together, it was, it was, we had more, we had more in common musically than, than, than I even thought we did. So, yeah. Well, it um, is, it's a beautiful, but match I remember, sure. I remember what's that. It is a beautiful match for sure. Oh, thanks man. Well, I do, but I do remember like, he reminded me of it. We for the first week we ever worked together, just him and I. He reminded me of it's going to be me. I mean, that was like a really, that was sort of a. I think he. I remember him saying like, "Yeah, that's the first time I actually really paid attention to one of the pop groups of that time." All right, my little peanuts. It has been great listening to your voices on the hotline. All the questions. I hope I have incorporated so many of these questions into uh, the guys' interviews this week. But uh, I also wanted to hear directly from you. And we got it. So let's play some of our lovely hotline messages. Hi, guys. My name is Anna. First off, thanks for interviewing all the guys for NSA Week awesome for all of us um our any our inner teeny boppers are dying right now um and i love you guys in high school back in 99 i had a friend and her name was delia we met randomly one day because she overheard me talking about and sink in the halls and just butted into my conversation from that day forward she was like my NSYNC bestie she was a great older so we didn't have the same classes and it would have been unlikely for us to meet or be friends 
I would say that you guys made that the easiest friendship I've ever made. And that was simply because we shared a love for you guys. So thank you for that. And we always promised each other that if ever one day we met or spoke to you guys, we would mention the other. Unfortunately, after she graduated high school, she had died in a terrible car accident. So this may be the closest I get to keeping that promise. So Justin, she wanted to tell you that she thought you were the most talented and beautiful human being she's ever laid eyes on. She confessed her love for you and then think every day. She would have been amazed and in awe to see the person you've become as an artist, husband, and father. I know fans confess their love for you on a daily basis, and I just wanted to make sure to include her love for you in there. Thanks so much for all the memories. I love you guys. Bye. Hi, Lance. Hi, other guys of NSYNC. That feels really cool to say. Still in my 30s. I am just kind of doing this off the cuff, but I just wanted to tell you guys how much you've meant to me since I was a teenager, since 1997. Thank you guys for being such a source of joy and happy memories in my life, even through adulthood. As I've gotten older and now into my 30s, I still wear my NSYNC shirt proudly because it is a reminder of good times and good memories and good music. I know you guys have had a huge impact on my life. I know I'm not the only one. I've made friends through NSYNC. One of my longest friends is one I've known since the seventh grade, and we became friends because of NSYNC. And so words can't truly express how much in sync means to me. The fact that No Strings Attached is 20 years old blows my mind. Happy birthday, you handsome devil of an in sync album, you. Thanks. Bye. So this is Amber Brussel. I'm just calling in to say hi to you and the guys as um, the 20th anniversary is coming up. It's hard to really encapsulate what in sync meant to me when I was young. A story that came to my mind though was my dad was pretty severely injured. We were in um, Mexico building a house for family. At some point during that whole time, I just started singing the No Strings Attached album, like start to finish, just to get my mind off the situation. And somebody asked me what I was doing and my mom was just like, she's doing what she does to calm down. It was bonkers, but it really helped me calm down in that situation. Um, my dad ended up being okay, uh, but it was a rough time. And I still kind of think back on that as the quintessential moment of like, how much in sync meant to me and calmed me down and was a part of our family. My mom took us to three in sync concerts. My dad watched in sync concerts with me at home. It was really cool as a teenager who usually seems feels very misunderstood by the parents to have them really connect with you through music and to actually understand my love for the U5. Hi Lance, my name is Shay. I'm from Utah. Um, I just wanted to say how excited I am for all of the interviews this week. I've been loving them so far and I wanted to wish you and all of the rest of the guys a happy 20th anniversary for No Strings Attached. That is a really good album. I think that's actually the album I was introduced to you guys with. Have a good week. Bye. Hi Lance, this is Jenna. I am from Cleveland, Ohio. I just want to say thank you so much for having all the guys from NSYNC on your podcast celebrating your 20 year of No Strings Attached. I have to say that I have been a huge fan of the band since the beginning. I still listen to your music to this day and you guys gave me the best memories of my childhood and now being in my early 30s I have been supporting everyone especially Justin I love his solo work I've been to his concerts and I just absolutely love you guys and thank you all for the memories that you have given me and thank you so much I love you all so much and best of luck in all of your future projects bye Oh, I love listening to those messages. They're so cute. Aren't the fans the best? They really are. You have some pretty good fans. I know. We, are, we have the best fan mm-hmm. ever. Uh, y'all are the best. All right, guys. Thank you so much for calling. And you know, we're always here for you. Even if the NSYNC boys are not here, we're here for you. Mm-hmm. So give us a call. It's 213-534-7503. So yeah, just give us a call at the hotline. Um, we're going to be bored as crap the next couple of weeks. So we need to hear from you. <laughs> at least we're honest. <laughs> Speaking of it's going to be me, I think I've heard you tell this story before, but how did it's going to be May come about? Was that something Max Martin was like, no, do it this way? 
Yeah, yeah. I, that, at least, I, I mean, listen, I could be getting this wrong, but I, at least I think, you know, Max had that, and he still does. I mean, he he. De- there are certain words in Can't Stop the Feeling when I was recording, and he was like, no, no, go back and do it this way. I think it's, I think he just has a real keen ear for what's going to be the most memorable way of, singing something um because you can't like if you go back and listen to that song anybody who sings along with that song you can't sing it's gonna be me like you can't yeah. sing it that yeah, way it doesn't <laughs> sound that great and yeah. I, I i think he also was you know whether i like it or not and you probably feel the same way we're always going to have a little bit of southern quality to the way we talk and the way we sing and mm-hmm. and our pace and i think that i think i i think i remember him saying like yeah, I just wanted to get a little bit of that out mm-hmm. of uh, when I was recording the song. He, he said that I think I, I think I remember him saying that I just want to get a little bit out of that out of me. Mm-hmm. So, and of course, you know, this, I don't know the the memes go crazy. You know, right before it is made time. Oh, yeah. Are you so over this meme, or do you like think it's funny every single year? Because we did find the girl who created that first meme. Um, what would you like to say to her? Uh, you're a legend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, honestly, I think it's, I, honestly, it's awesome. I think it's, uh, I, I, I think, I, I think I tweeted something like years ago where it's like, Hey guys, I, I, it's gonna, it's gonna be me. I get it. You know, where it was like more of a joke <laughs> on the joke, but mm-hmm. honestly, uh, it, it, you know, I, I, I'm pretty sure you feel the same way. It feels like the gift that keeps on giving every right. year. You know? <laughs> well, it is great. I mean, you, you, we always thought "Bye Bye Bye" would be our, 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 you know, our legacy, right? But I feel like it's going to be me is the one that's gonna, everyone's going to love because I have a feeling twenty years from now, people are still going to be saying that on you know April thirtieth. <laughs> so that I think is what's going to make us live forever. That and a Christmas album. Yeah, you could be. You're probably right. Mm-hmm. You're probably right. I mean, I think when it, when people visualize us as a group, "Bye Bye Bye" will be. Mm-hmm. You know, bye 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 will be the thing because the the one little, you know, signature dance move that came with it that that I think I feel like if you're if if you karaoke that song you have like and you don't do that move then yeah then that's a that's a fail like that's a major fail yeah um, dance moves always and, make a, a hit song yeah but I but you could be right man I think it's it's gonna be me may end up being our mm-hmm. Um, living legacy. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's get to Richard Marks. Now we got to collaborate with some really great people. You know, um, I mean, we sure. performed with Celine Dion, Gloria Estefan, Phil Collins, all, you know, some great ones. Richard Marks wrote this, I promise you on no strings attached, which I thought was definitely one of my favorite ballads we ever did. What, um, what were your For thoughts sure. working with Richard Marks? Were you a fan at the time? Yeah, well, I was a big, I think JC and I kind of, you know, when we were younger, bonded over a little bit of uh, Richard Marx. Uh, we uh, we had a little fan club. You know, I think there's you know songs like um, "Don't Mean Nothing" and "Should Have Been Better." And I mean, he's he he had some songs that were just fantastic. And I remember seeing him in concert when I was really young, um, and uh, just being like, "Oh my God, this guy plays every instrument." He's got all these wonderful songs. His voice is so cool. Um, that was like at that time where it was like the Kenny Loggins, Richard Marks, like that raspy, like, you know, that mm-hmm. raspy pop voice. Mm-hmm. It was kind of like the thing, right? I remember it was like, like, uh, what's the band, what's the group that, um, like, like Roxette, there was like the lead singer of Roxette, right, right. and then, you know, like all, all, all those, all those male voices were like really like, you know, um, they had that like really raspy quality to them. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I remember when we first heard the demo for that song, I remember hearing the demo for that song and hearing him sing it. And I was like, Oh no, <laughs> like <laughs> we're never going to be able to sing it this good. Like <laughs> I have such a, you know, I have such a different voice from his. And, you know, as you know, all of as the, I think the reason why we were such a good, I always have been a good acapella group because we all have such distinct voices. Mm-hmm. I remember, I remember feeling, feeling the pressure on 
on that phone to, to, to deliver. I mean, thank God for, for JC Chazay. So I knew, I knew at least when it got past the second course, he could, he could bear the weight of all those big belty notes. Oh, please. You, but, sound, um, you both are incredible on that song. Incredible. Well, thanks. My, I, remember that, I think, honestly, I think that was probably, that was probably the first time I started to, cause, uh, you know, I, I, you know this too, as we both went through it. Um, you had this, I had this crazy weird voice change, you know? Um, and I think, um, that was kind of one of the first times I, I started to learn about like my falsetto. Yeah. Which I think has probably become, you know, a more of a signature for, for, for my voice, mm -hmm. um, as the years have gone by. But, um, yeah, yeah, I just remember feeling like, and then we heard the demo for that song, and I just felt like, wow, this is like, uh, this is like a song. Yeah. You know, like it just felt every, every lyric and every melody, it just, as my songwriting started to develop more and more, I just remember I still have such an appreciation for that song because you could do that song one with, you could do that song any different way, and it's still going to be a wonderful song. Yeah, you know? and it also sounds amazing in Spanish. I think that might have been the first Spanish song we recorded, "Yo Te Voy a Mar," um, which I thought was just beautiful. Yeah, you might. Yeah, you might be right about that. I told this story the other day on um, Ellen. I don't know if you remember this, but um, when we were shooting the video, do you remember? I don't know if you remember. Do you remember Joey and I to go to Alcatraz? Oh yeah, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> anyway, I, I I think Joey and I may go down in history as some of the more idiotic people. We got caught like breaking into Broke a prison into um, Alcatraz. <laughs> yeah, we, well, it was it's a, it's a long story, but but mm -hmm. I just remember we shot that video in the redwood. And, well, we've shot it and, twice. Uh, remember the first video sucked so much we scrapped it and, and shot it again. Oh, that's right. Uh -huh. Oh, you're right. I forgot about that. Yeah, the first. I mean. The second one was just as cheesy, but the first one, like, that must have been horrible if we scrapped that. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my gosh. I I totally, well, by the way, that also speaks to the era that we were, that, like, the record labels were just printing money because they were like, yeah, scrap it, shoot another one. We I got know. the budget. <laughs> like, these days, you're like, they're like, yeah, yeah, you're not even going to get to shoot a video. Oh, yeah. No, back in the day, it was, a different world now. you'd have a million dollars to spend on a video. Now, it's like, you got to be around oh. 25000 and we're good. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. There's a, I mean, the D, the DIY culture is, is is has definitely, but I, but I think it's cool. I think um, I think that's something that's that we talked about. We were we were speaking about earlier about how things have changed. Um, I, that's something that I actually really like about mm -hmm. about how to be able to get so much music these days. All right. All right. Let's fly through the rest of these. But yeah, here. back in our day. We're, we're we're seriously having some like back in our day uh -huh. oh, type of uh, that's every day on my show. <laughs> it's a common theme of being made, like back in my day, um, <laughs> right? All right, let's fly through the rest of these uh, tracks. So okay. just give me like one sentence, whatever, of your thoughts on either recording it or first okay. hearing it. No strings attached. Uh, yeah. Uh, again, it, it, that felt like that that felt like the same as Space Cowboy, where it had that sort of aggressive synthy. You know, I think it was like that's the first time that we were starting to play with like real tricks with the with uh, the computer, um, and and I remember the the dance artist uh, uh, BT being a big inspiration for for JC at that point, and we were he was pushing he was pushing the the dance nature of it all, and um, obviously it's a symbolic song because it represented what how we felt, you know. Breaking free of of our uh, of our former management. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, what about digital get down? Did you know JC was always a freak? <laughs> Did I know JC was such a freak? Is mm -hmm. that what you said? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, it's, well, it's like they say, Lance. It's the pet ones you got to worry about. <laughs> yeah. <right>. Um, <laughs> uh, no, no. Um, I, I remember um, that was also too. Like it felt. It felt like it was it could live in the same world sonically with the it makes me ill, mm -hmm. you know. Um, it kind of had that um, um, that progression. It kind of had some. It, it had a little more rhythmic, rhythmic, mm -hmm. uh, you know, R and B influence to it. But yeah, I remember feeling like, yeah, this is yeah, this 
this, this I promise you, this is not, yeah. you know, like I remember the, the lyrics would be like, Oh, okay. So we're, th- that was like, a, I think that was one of our first times to make a record that was really like, you know, uh, sort of like sexual, mm-hmm. you know, record to yeah. kind of speak to that part of, you know, of, of, of the human experience, I should say. But, um, again, I remember feeling like all the, you know, it was one of those other songs, uh, two from the record that I felt when I heard it, I remember feeling like, Oh man, live, this is going to be so we could, we could have so, we could do so many cool things with, you know, um, with this song live. Uh, and we did, I mean, and during our, what was it? The pop out, which tour was it where we wore the light up outfits and did this song? That was no strings of tanks, wasn't it? I guess I don't know. I get them all confused. Justin, I have no, we idea. had the, uh, we had the treadmills. Oh yeah, treadmills for that song. Yes, we did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why? How? <laughs> how do I remember that? But I can't remember the lyrics to the right. song. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> um. All right, go to bring in the noise. What do you think about that? Um, that one. Th- th- I don't. You know, that one. I think was probably. I think that one to me felt like. It was probably a bridge from the first album to the second album. Yeah, it does remind me um, of when we first kind of got together. Yeah, yeah, it kind of had that um, that fight rinse. Um, it, 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 yeah, it had that. It had that Euro feel to it. That's mm-hmm. what I remember about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we got to work with the one and only Diane Warren. Uh, this album we did. That's when I'll stop loving you. Um, Mm-hmm. Do you remember the first time you met Diane and what it was like to work with her? Yeah, well, I just remember I remember being blown away that such a foul-mouthed human being could write <laughs> like so, so many wonderful love songs. I, uh, I remember like we walked in she and she was just like, "Hey, all you fucking guys, get in here!" <laughs> it's like I just remember I remember thinking like, "Oh." this is Diane Warren. And, mm-hmm. and immediately I think we all kind of like just fell in love with her mm-hmm. at that point. And, and uh, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know the last time, when's the last time you saw her? I mean, I saw her recently and it's still the same thing. Oh and, yeah. No, I get to see her. I mean, I, I see her a good bit now. I mean, she's always at different events and we stay in touch on Facebook a lot, right. but no, she has not changed. Right. She's the exact same person. <laughs> that's like, that's like, and, 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 and one of those people that, that, you say that about in such an endearing way because mm-hmm. she was always so authentic back then and like, you know, didn't take herself too seriously. And, mm-hmm. and, uh, I think that's kind of who we, we have always been as well. Um, so yeah, she's still the same old foul mouth Diane writing yeah. the love song you wish you wrote. <laughs> and in, and in this same time we did, uh, the Diane Moore song with Gloria Estefan, uh, music of my heart, which I remember, music- during yeah, this, music in my heart, yeah. and I think it was during this whole launch of No Strings Attached. It, within the next, like the first two weeks, I think that was when we did the Academy Awards and performed that song. Honestly, your memory is better than mine, bro. Because <laughs> uh, I, I just remember that that time being such a blur. Do you have any memories from the Academy Awards? Because you know it was something so different from us. We never got to, you know, we were purely music. Um, and you know, one of my biggest memories of course is, uh, getting to spend a little time with Robin Williams, uh, backstage cause we were all performing. Um, is there anything that sticks out to you right. during that performance? I do remember, I do remember, I do remember, you know, I do remember Robin Williams like cracking us up backstage. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I, I felt like that was probably, I think that may have been one of the, few moments at that point in our career because we had seen so much i think that may have been one of the few moments we all kind of looked at each other like all right you know everybody stop effing around okay this is the academy awards it's yeah it's like, serious now it's finally you know, serious like, guys <laughs> yeah yeah we were like all right we're doing we're coming to show up with glorious stuff on okay this is a freaking legend <laughs> and we need to just like chris everybody chris like <laughs> no more jokes okay <laughs> just remember, like it was kind of like that thing where we were like, wow, we got to get to be at the Academy Awards. It was like, mm-hmm. um, uh, and then again, I think it's to, you know, who we were as, uh, as who we, who we've always been as professionals. We just wanted to do a great job because I, I think we were like, 
I think I, I think I was having a conversation like you don't want to let you know you don't want to let her down. You know what I mean? Like it was we, we I, you know. But I, I remember being a different. That was that was one of the more different experiences we had had at that point. Because um, mm-hmm. you know we we were we were coming off the coming off the strength of like like we were talking about earlier. You know our fan base uh, at that time. You know showing up and. I mean, they were, the decibel level was, was a different thing, you know, back then. And then, um, you know, we show up at the Academy Awards and everybody's like, cricket. cricket. Yeah, right. Like, no one <laughs> you <know>? likes us. Oh. <laughs> like, I just remember it was like, okay, we're going to go, we're going to go up there and we're going to sing the song. We're going to finish and we're going to get, we're going to get the hell out of here. <laughs> like, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> All right. Um, let's get to I'll Be Good For You. Um, you wrote this one with K Tunes, Kevin Ann Tunes. Um, that's right. That's wh- right. Do you remember how this all started? I mean, obviously y'all were on, we were on the road. Um, wh- where did that's this right. idea come from? So that's a, So that was, that idea was started on an MPC on the back of our bus. <laughs> um, and Kevin came on and he had, you know, we were playing with different drum sounds and I remember thinking I wanted to do, this is going to, if whoever's listening to this right now, this is going to sound like the most crass reference, but it's just, it's just the fact, it's just a fact. Mm-hmm. I was really big on Maxwell at that time and that uh, urban, uh, urban hang sweet album where he had like, the song something, something. And, um, and, uh, I wanted to do something for, uh, I felt like I wanted to do something for us that again was just closer to, uh, you know, R&B music, which is just kind of the stuff that I grew up on. And, um, and so, yeah, that, that idea was, that, that idea started on the back, on the back of a bus, you know, a tour bus. And, and, um, yeah, it felt, again, it, you know, it, it felt like something that was, it, obviously, it, it's not a single and it's not, um, you know, it's it's not it's going to be me, for instance, but it, I don't know. I just remember feeling like I wanted to keep pushing us to be as diverse as possible. Yeah. And because I just knew we could do it. I knew I knew we were, you know, I know our, our voices would match. Yeah. Uh, they've always matched a lot of different styles. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. And it was uh, that that song's kind of like it's just kind of a groovy kind of it's, it's a little stony, to be honest. It's kind of. Yeah. A little groovy kind of. I like it. Taking us back to our R&B roots. I like it. Um, <laughs> all right. The last and certainly not least, I thought she knew Robin Wiley. What were your thoughts? I mean, this is yeah. one of the first, I mean, we learned the Star Spangled Banner, but the next one that we all learned together was I thought she knew original acapella. Right. Um, right. What, what do you remember about that song? Uh, well, um, obviously, you know, when any of us speak about Robin, um, she's probably, I'd say she's at least in the top, you know, top three most influential people for me, um, musically. Um, and she really is more so than anyone. She, I think she's the most important, um, she's the most important ingredient to our success. Uh, you know, the, you always hear about the, you know, the certain people who play in the studio on certain records and, and, uh, you know, or, or there's an exec who is responsible for this one person's success. But I, I just, when I, there'd be no NSYNC without Robin, yeah. you know, I and mean, she really, she really was the one who, who, who helped us kind of, put our sound together as, as, as a group of, 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 you know, five different voices. And, and, um, I, I know that I remember there was, I remember us talking about that song and saying, you know, how, and, and remembering too, how important, you know, um, acapella, you know, music was to all of us, you know, looking up to groups like take six, and boys to men and you know i remember you know we always when you go back and listen to you know it's so hard to say goodbye to yesterday about boys to men i mean that's like 
to me, that's one of the best acapella, you know, performances, you know, and, and, and one of the few in history probably that was a real hit just as an acapella song. Right, yeah. And, um, so I, I remember, I remember, you know, I remember us it coming up in conversation and saying, oh no, that, that song has to be on the album. It has to be the last song on the album. You know, we just, and, and, and it really is, you know, that's one of the most special songs to me when I think of, you know, all, all the stuff that we've ever recorded. You know, I think that along with our version of Oh Holy Night, mm-hmm. uh, which obviously Robin, you know, did all the arrangements for that as well. Um, you know, I think that that was one, that was an element of our group that was so distinguishing for us that, you know, if you go back and listen to those arrangements, they're very complex. There, there's a lot of jazz influence in those arrangements. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously it's, 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 it seems weird you and I both talking about Robin because it's just like this, crazy love appreciation conversation but it should be said on this that like she is in my opinion without a doubt like the most integral music element of why we were who we were i agree and why we've always been you know why we've always had the sound that we've had yeah yeah if she was so special and definitely i mean she's the one who created the sound for us. I mean, it was, she was incredible. And yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to be interviewing next week, a bunch of people behind the scenes like Johnny Wright and, you know, Kevin and oh, cool. and my biggest, you know, uh, regret is that I cannot interview her next week. I know um, because uh, the know. stories that she must have, you know, it would have been oh, I know. incredible. All right, Turkey. I have kind of some really exciting news for you because we have a new sponsor that you don't even know about yet. What? All is right. it a puppy? <laughs> I wish. Now I have to tell you uh, about an amazing new service I found called FrameBridge. Mm-hmm. Have you heard of FrameBridge yet? No. Oh, just wait. So they make it super easy and affordable to frame your favorite things from art prints like you have and posters ah. to the travel photos sitting on your phone. Well, that's cool. Right? Yeah. I mean, because I was telling everyone when we go to, you know, a framing store, it's ridiculous how expensive these things are. Oh, it's so expensive. I'm floored every time you have to frame something. I know. That's why I don't frame my painting. So what you do is you go to framebridge.com, upload your photo, or they'll send you packaging to safely mail in your physical pieces, preview your item online in any frame style, choose your favorite, or get free recommendations from their talented designers because... Let's be real. Not many people know how to pick a, the the perfect frame for their house. Oh, I know. Well, picking a frame is just like just just as hard as picking the yeah. actual painting. It or has whatever to be you want perfect. To yeah. yeah. So uh, the expert team at FrameBridge will custom frame your item and deliver your finished piece directly to your door, ready to hang. And instead of hundreds you'd pay at a framing store, their prices start at thirty nine dollars. Well, that's actually crazy, right? You can't like because ha- anything it's hundreds. Yeah, every yeah. time. And all shipping's free. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. So my listeners are going to get 15% off their first order at framebridge.com when they use my code POP. So now that I can frame all of your paintings, and let me tell you, there's a lot without any hassle and with a much better price. Yeah, no, that's amazing. That's so get, Definitely a good one, guys. Yeah, so get started today. From fully designed gallery walls to the perfect wedding gift, go to framebridge.com and use the promo code POP and you'll save an additional 15% off your first order. Just go to framebridge.com, promo code POP, framebridge.com. Promo code POP. Lance, you're looking so good today. Oh, you think, Jess? It could be uh, the shirt I'm wearing. I actually definitely think it's your shirt. And what is that? Because I love the look. Well, the brand is Untuck It because I don't tuck anything in. And Mm -hmm. trust me, it is the brand you've been looking for. Okay, tell me more. It's the original Untucked shirt, a modern solution to an old problem with no tucking or tailoring required. Wow. And no matter your size or shape, their shirts are the perfect untucked length. Well, ever wonder why traditional button-ups look so long and baggy? Tell me more. Well, that's because they were never meant to be worn that way. Untucked shirts were specifically designed to be worn untucked. So I don't like to tuck in any of my shirts. So the fact that Untucked exists is pretty amazing for me. The shirts fit great and are the perfect length. With more than 50 fit combinations, Untucked shirts look great on tall, short, slim, and athletic guys of all ages. I would, I'd be the athletic. Yes. <laughs> My type isn't on there. So yeah, definitely Fluffy. not athletic. <laughs> the quality is incredible. And honestly, the website is very easy to use as I do use it. 
Yeah, I'm actually convinced Untuck It is the best, huh? It is. It's the way I sell it, though. That's why. That's why yeah, you're that's, just loving yeah, this. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, don't just take my word for it, though. Try Untuck It for yourself or your man out there. Or, I mean, I'm sure a lot of women would like Untuck It, too. Mm -hmm. Why not? Visit UntuckIt.com and use code POPCAST for 20% off your first order. They even offer free shipping and returns on all orders in the U.S. That's U-N-T-U-C-K-I-T.com and promo code POPCAST for 20% off your first order. So speaking of, uh, you know, our collaborations, um, is there anyone that you like back 20 years ago, who would have been the coolest collab if we could have had anyone that we could have chosen? Who would you have chosen? Uh, gosh, man. I mean, we got to, you know, we got to work with so many people, man. It was, I mean, you know, one thing that I always remember was like that moment of bringing, you know, Michael back on stage at the VMAs mm -hmm. was like, that was a surreal moment. Um, you know, I mean, the first, the first name that comes to mind is Missy Elliott. Oh yes. Um, the world needs more I Missy think, Elliott. Damn it. There's, there's no such thing as too much Missy right? Elliott. Mm -hmm. I, that's, that's like, uh, that's like a, that's a law of humanity. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. It, it was it was fun, man. We got to, you know, I mean, we in the we were we were really fortunate and 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 blessed that by the time we really got our thing together, I mean, we were we could go on stage with Aerosmith and then we could turn around and do a a, a record with Nelly, mm -hmm. you know, um, and it felt and it always felt organic, right. Um, but I think it also speaks to the fact that we all grew up in the time that we grew up in and we were just influenced by so many different types of people Man. and so many different types of music. Um, so I don't know. I, I guess the first name that came to mind is, is Missy. I like it. Now that's um, actually a perfect one. I, that would have been amazing. Um, now we've had some, you know, we've had our own, you know, fair share of hairstyles and outfits <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> uh, we went through, you know, yeah. 90, you know, Late nineties was not great for style at all. If we could have, if we could have only, if we could have only been a decade earlier, right? Where the internet wasn't so, where everything wasn't <laughs> so doc, like documented. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we are immortalized in some really horrible things. Looking back, what was your favorite hairstyle and outfit that you did? <laughs> Gosh, I, I, you know, to be honest, man, I, I, I think. Uh, <laughs> he's like uh wow there's just so many i'm just so proud of mm -hmm. um no um because you did go through a bandana phase I, and i was when i think p diddy and j-lo were dating and it was all about the bandanas that were you know like crystals all over them um yeah you went through that phase for yeah. sure mm -hmm. you know what you know what honestly man like true true confession I think I just started wearing bandanas because I couldn't figure out what the hell to do with my hair. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I, I'll, I'll say, uh, one of the, one of the, uh, I mean, there's, there's a ton that I, that, 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 that I would probably go back and not do at this mm -hmm. point. I mean, one um, of my favorites is definitely the denim on denim when you and Brittany did, I think it was MTV. Um, that there's, uh, those were, uh, <laughs> I mean, did were those designed by a designer? That now that now 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 that now that one I'm I, I don't know, man. You could kind of rock that today. <laughs> um, I mean, uh, maybe, maybe we'll do a poll on that and see what happens. <laughs> but yes, hey, denim on denim you know, is kind of popular now. But uh, yeah, it was definitely you know, a look. Look, man. If, <laughs> you, you do a lot of things when you're young and in love, man. That's yeah, what you do. Exactly. Um, uh, I think I think probably I think I I mean when I think when I shaved my head I was uh I was like oh yeah okay this is this this will work mm -hmm. this will work um well yeah man uh, were you scared to you know, know what like cuz a lot of people when they you know shave the locks off you don't really know what the shape of your <laughs> head is underneath that so were you scared that you're like <laughs> yeah. I don't know what this is going to look like I was, I was, I was like, what if I have some weird knot on the side of my head? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, you know, one look that I, you know, 
one look that I remember, you know, we did so many looks, but I remember the one I look back on as a really sort of, I don't know, funny one and interesting one, um, but still kind of like, I don't know, in some weird way, I kind of dug it was the sort of Sergeant Pepper inspired, you know, outfit, outfits that we wore when we were opening up on the Velvet Rope tour. Do you remember those? Oh, yes. I think they're in... Were they like all silk? Oh, yeah. They were like crushed velvet, I think. Um, Oh, my god! Because I remember I was in a Hard Rock Cafe not too long ago, and they had mine in a glass case and i'm like really we're gonna immortalize oh that gosh. that outfit's the one that we're gonna choose to <laughs> hard rock oh, yeah, yeah. that was horrible um well but also too like i think i think you know here's a funny thing about all that too is i remember i remember when we like we went on our first opening act tour um and we came up with that intro to come out um to and um, I don't know if you remember this, but like JC and I had gone in and we had take, taken the Imperial March mm-hmm. and our whole idea was like, we want to come out of stormtroopers, but like we had no budget. Uh-huh. And so we just basically put like white suits on with like motorcycle helmets. Yeah. Do you, do you remember that? Do you remember where we got those helmets? Where? So we were go-karting in Germany and they gave them to us. We're like, great. We don't have to spend money on outfits. So we create an outfit because we have these helmets. So I bring this up. I bring all of this up. Basically, like, I remember when we were like, we would do three shows in a day when we toured Europe when we first started out. Mm -hmm. We would go to a show, go to the airport, go to the bathroom in the airport, switch clothes, go do another show, get on another plane. I, I don't know if you remember, like... I think, I think by the time we actually got a budget to spend on clothing, I think we were just all like, we are afraid of nothing. <laughs> like, <laughs> we were like, we will wear anything. Yep. Like, and, and I felt bad uh, for, you know, our moms, cause your mom and my mom were out there like the first, you know, few months and, you know, we didn't have anyone with us. I mean, we were, we were kind of just running the ship ourselves and, you know, our poor moms had to wash those clothes like every day. And you know, those must have stunk. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I remember, I remember being, I remember like we had some sort of like, they were like, they almost looked like Harlem Globetrotter warm up suits or something, something like that. And, and, uh, they were all like satin, you know, tear, you know, the tearaway pants were really popular then the basketball tearaway pants. And I remember going into my mom's room in Germany and her like, go, seeing, in her bathroom and all of our outfits, like she had like hand washed them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we were really, we were really balling on the budget back like then. Oh we yes. Were, you know what? Yeah. That's a, the struggle of a, you know, an artist at the beginning that it's very real, but I think you have to go through that. You know, I think you appreciate uh, when the success yeah. comes, you really appreciate it. If you have to go through the hard times. Oh, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. I think, you know, seeing, seeing the, I think when I look at, when I think about No Strings Attached, I mean, I think that was us at our highest, uh, performance. Um, you know, it, it, that was us being at our highest, you know, inspiration for, for the stage and performance and theatrics. Mm-hmm. You know, it was, we really took that theme and we turned it into, you know, we took the, we, we took the Pinocchio kind of theme, um, and, and, and turned it, you know, everything was about the stage right. at that point for us. And, and, um, you know, I mean, if you look back at it as a concept, it, it was really, it was, it was a really special time and a, and a really cool thing for us to, to, uh, to have, um, cause it represented so much, but also in the same way, it, you know, it could be something theatrical for the fans as well. Yeah. Um, I do want to go back and talk a little MMC because I mean, I still can't believe all the talent that came from your damn television show. Um, I mean, when, uh, when did you join yeah. MMC that you were what? 13 or 12? Uh, the first season that I was on the show, I think I was 11. Wow. It was 11, 12. Here's, here's what's hilarious about to, to me. I mean, a, a few things that are kind of, really interesting 
one, um, the, the, the sort of class that came on that I was part of, which obviously has a lot of talent that have gone on to do a, a crazy number of things. We actually came on towards the end of its run. I mean, obviously we were only on for two seasons. So when I tell people about that show, I say, well, <laughs> you know, obviously like it's a cable show and it clearly, clearly wasn't doing what Disney had hoped for it to do. Cause it was canceled. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't, um, <laughs> you know, it, it wasn't, it clearly wasn't as successful. I mean, it went on for seven seasons, which yeah. I think is a huge feat. Yeah, definitely. But when I look back at it, I'm like, well, we were we were kind of only on for for two seasons, and and, and maybe it was, maybe that was, um, maybe that was just like a sign of the times or something that, that like the company was moving on. Yeah, of course. But, I mean, look, things um, you know, you can't keep everything so popular, you know, for so many years. So seven years is is crazy. But there's been sure. so many iterations of Mickey Mouse Club from the '50s to now. But it's insane that those last two years are the people that we all remember and the ones that did the craziest thing. You got Christina Aguilera, you got Britney Spears, you got Ryan Gosling, you got Carrie Russell. I mean, just so many yeah. people, all all this talent in one room. Did you when you were working with all of them? Did you know this was something special? Or was it just kind of just normal to you? Well, I remember being at, listen, I remember being at the casting camp where it was, you know, 30 mm-hmm. people, uh, 30 kids. And there was so much talent at, at the casting camp. Um, um, but yeah, I think, uh, I mean, you, you know, I think more than anyone at that time, because we were so young, the one, the, the, the one person that it was like clear that she was going to go on to have a record deal was Christina. Oh, I mean, yeah. she just, she, she would open her, her, her mouth and that voice would come out and you'd be like, like, it was like, a, it was like alien like. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, that someone so tiny, you know, from like the outskirts of, you know, Pittsburgh, I think, you know, and she's smoking, she, she, she belt out a song and she would like, it was like, it was like a fully realized adult, yeah. you know? Um, but, but I, I I'll say this about that show as well. Like, I, I think it's the most informative, um, experience I've ever had as an entertainer. Yeah. And, and also too, it, it is, you know, not only those names you mentioned, you know, Christina Aguilera, Britney Spears, Ryan Gosling, and so many other, so much other guy, Carrie Russell, and and and, and but there, everybody on the show was 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 that talented. You know, I remember getting there and meeting, you know, Tony Luca and 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 Dale Gabaldo and this guy named Josh Jose, who yeah. everyone called JC. Yeah. And I immediately, I immediately felt like he he was a, of the of the older cast. I obviously became very good friends with Matt Morris. But of the older cast, like, and people I had just known on the show, JC was always my favorite. He was always, you know, him and Tony were someone, were, were two guys that they were a little bit older than Ryan and I. And we kind of like, we wanted to do everything that they did. Yeah. You know, what I mean, was we it? Were, what was it about we JC? That, we were like true adolescents. Yeah. What'd you say? I said, what was it about JC that you knew was like, okay, this is, I can bond with this guy. He can teach me a few things. Well, obviously he, obviously he was crazy talented. So, uh, it, you know, like I said, everybody there was so, so talented, but I don't know. He just felt easy going. He was, he was one of the, he was one of the older cast that was like genuinely nice to the younger kids coming in yeah. and there was, there was never, you know, there was never anything, you know, threatening about, uh, JC. And he, he really was more, he was like just really supportive, but also he was just, he was just kind of cool. You know, like he was, he, he was really easy going and we we're all like, Oh, I guess we don't have to take this that seriously. Like, <laughs> this is, this is gotta be, this is supposed to be fine. And, um, and yeah, I, I think um, I think we bonded over over liking the same types of music too. So yeah, I mean, you know, MMC is uh, obviously there'd be no there'd be no 
there'd be no no in sync without that probably no entertainment <laughs> everyone that's in the business <laughs> came from there do you have uh what is your relationships with everyone? do you get to keep in touch with christina and Brittany and carrie russell and all that like what is y'all's relationships now i mean i'm sure y'all went through such a bond that you're family for life but do you get to run into everyone that often well so, well something you did something that you have to remember is my first my first North American tour as a solo artist was Christina and I as a joint tour. Yeah. Yeah. Which she was had an put incredible out the tour. Stripped album. Mm -hmm. She had put out the stripped album and I had put out the justified album. And we, uh, yeah, we went on tour. We, we went on a world tour together and yeah. had a blast. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I, I've seen, I've seen all of them over the years, different. You know, at different times through my twenties and and thirties, and it's uh, you know, it's it's always great to run into anyone. Um, um, like 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 we said at the beginning of this conversation, I mean, I'm still very good friends with with uh, with Nikki Deloach, who who was came who came into uh, came onto the show in the same group of 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 young kids that 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 I was a part of. But yeah, I mean, I think we I think we kind of. We keep in touch. I mean, everybody's, you know, life, when you get older, things get busier and mm -hmm. you start your own families and, yep. and those things become priority. And, and, you know, that's, that, that, that becomes something that, that always, you know, makes you wish you had more time. I, I know what it means now with like hearing my grandparents and my parents are like, I just wish there were more hours in the day. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, every time I see anyone, I mean, I definitely keep in touch with Matt a lot, um, and uh, and yeah, I mean, I, I feel like I, you, you know, it's the business. You know how it is, man. You 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 see you see people here and there. Um, um, which activities make you lose track of time? Which activities? Mm -hmm. Uh, just being a dad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, that, I, I, I think even, I mean, listen, I have a, I have a four year old and he's wonderful, but like I slept for three hours last night. Mm -hmm. Um, imagine. and you know, it just, it could, it, it, it's just anything, but it, honestly, it's, it's also the thing that, you know, you you realize too, like you're not lo you're not losing time. You know, you're you're not losing time. You're you're having this experience that just turns you into a completely different human. Mm -hmm. um, so, I don't know. Um, you know, other than that, uh, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> as it's uh, a I think as it's apropos to uh, to our no string anniversary. I think we could all probably agree that negotiations take up too much time. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. So, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I remember, um, I don't, I don't, do you remember, this is something that I was trying to, in, in anticipation of our talking, um, because again, because again, and I, I'm sure the other guys have said this, and I'll say it to you, like, I don't think there's any other, I'm glad you have this format, because I don't think there's any other format where I would, get this personal about our experience and but being able to talk about it with someone who actually was there and like was living the same experience yeah. it's just a different thing and we never really um, have time to explain ourselves anytime we talk about anything it's always like a two three minute you know situation where we have to get you know everything in and done but this is it's been really nice being able to you know get deep with everyone and, and really try yeah to yeah for things. sure well and even and, and listen, we could probably sit here and talk for ten hours oh, straight yeah. and still keep on covering things. Mm -hmm. That's that's the, that was what was amazing about our experience. Um, but but yeah, it's just you know. Um, well, also too, like you said, those 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 two to three minute sound bites get contorted and yeah. distorted and misquoted. And I mean, you you, know, you go they, through they it in, more than anyone. But I mean, would you say? that pretty much everything, especially the headlines of you, um, has always been distorted. Cause I mean, I find that, I mean, you, it's the most innocent thing. So I'm like, well, no, that's not exactly what I said at all. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I would say, 
well, I'll say this. I don't remember a time where I wasn't. So maybe yeah. that answers the question yeah, true. Yep. the most, but mm-hmm. I don't know. It's, it's a, you know, we're, that that's getting into like a whole, yeah. like a whole, you know, at, at, at some point, yeah, I think you have to say like, look, um, at some point I think you have to say, you know, there's, there's definitely a projection, but that doesn't have to be who, who I am to myself. Right. Like, you know, and, and, and that happens with just, like you said, it could be the smallest little comment and someone take it the wrong way. Yeah, um, exactly. And everyone's but, um, looking for that gotcha, that got you headline, you know? Yeah, we're definitely, you know, we're, we're in a, that's why, that's why I said, like you having this format is really special for us to get to talk about because this doesn't, you know, this isn't like a clickbait conversation. This is just two, you know, this is two friends you know, talking over a crazy experience that we've had. I, I, I really appreciate it, man. No. I, I, no, I, I think appreciate it's it. I know y'all, y'all have been so good. You got to figure this. out, you got to figure out a way to, uh, you got to figure out a way to get all four of us in the room with you. Uh, that would be nice. And, uh, Once we're all unquarantined, we'll, <laughs> we'll have to get together because yeah. we've been, because we've been yeah. trying to plan a trip together for, I don't know how long. I mean, Every time in our group is like, so do we want to go here? What are we going to go here? But none of us can figure out a date. So that's not happening anytime soon, or unless we all just come to Montana with you. You got room for us? Yeah, I, I get, listen, I got, I got <laughs> bunk rooms. I got, I got extra rooms that we can, we got, I got pull out couches. I got blow up mattresses. Bring it. <laughs> we just won't invite Joey. Cause if anyone has coronavirus, it's going to be Joey. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so- Oh, um, that, that, that's so, that's so wrong because it's probably true. <laughs> um, Justin, if you had to teach something, what would you teach? I don't know. I mean, I mean, golf would be a good one. You're a damn good golfer. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know that I'd be a great golf instructor. I, you know, I, I'll, I'll say this, man. I, I feel like I'm at this point where I'm getting to work with a lot of, a lot of artists that, um, that are young and I still look up to um, and it's so it, it's nice to be able to get infused with all this new energy from them but also maybe show them a few tricks that I've learned from the Max Martins of the world or you know um, like we said the 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 Pharrells and the Timberlands and the you know and even the Richard Marxes of the world to be able to 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 you know help them progress their their uh, songwriting or recording or, mm-hmm. so i don't know I, I think at this point i it, i would it, i would love for it to be something music based for yeah. sure yeah um and when do you feel most like yourself uh gosh i mean uh, you know at this point i i think at this point you know i touched on it a little bit earlier but really becoming a parent it, there's there's I mean, I had this conversation with friends of mine that have become parents. It's like there's life before and there's life after. And they're just like, you just don't go back, yeah. you know? Um, so I don't know. I, I guess I, you know, I mean, you and I both grew up with the same type of, uh, kind of, I don't know, ideals and morals. I think, you know, it's, it's probably just when you're with family, Yeah. you know, at, at this point, um, and I think being creative, I think that's the other place where I if, if I can be creative, I think I feel most like myself, whether it's, you know, uh, writing a song or, 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 you know, playing a character, um, in, in a film or television or just being able to create something out of, out of, out of nothing, um, is kind of, a it's a, it's a real, it's a real person to be able to be a part of something like that, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't know why this popped in my head, but one of my favorite memories with you is just being in the back of the bus and cranking Alison Krauss. We were like so obsessed with her at that time. And I just remember oh, sitting there yeah. just like getting lost in Alison Krauss, like as loud as we could. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Man. She, um, what song, what song was it? At that, was she, it's in, uh, what song was it at that time? Oh, what is the name of that song? I, just, I mean, the, the biggest song they had, her and Union Station. Well, when you say nothing at all? Yes. 
when you say nothing. Yeah. Because there, there was a group also that had just done that too, maybe over in Europe. I'm like, oh, this is the best song, but like, Alison Krauss is Yeah, the best. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, gosh, I mean, that's just, you know, what a classic voice. Mm-hmm. Um, what are you listening to right now? Uh, who should we be looking out for? Because, I mean, I'm sure – you know, since you're so deep into this music industry, you kind of know what's coming next. Who should we be looking out for? You know, to, uh, to I mean, this is going to be the worst answer ever, but I, I just feel like I listen to everything, man. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, my, my playlist over the last week has been everything from, uh, you know, the J Electronica album um, to, uh, I mean, I still play a lot of Stapleton. We still play a lot of Stapleton in our, in our house. Mm-hmm. Um, God, your duet with him. Holy moly. Like top notch. Yeah. What a voice. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I've been listening to the J Electronica album just cause it makes me feel it's it's new, but also makes me feel like a, like there's these elements of when I first discovered hip hop, mm-hmm. like when I first discovered rap music. What I don't know, just the sound of it and the uh, you know the 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 vibe of it. Um, but I don't know, you know me, man. I've always listened to everything. Yeah. What uh, what TV shows should we be watching right now? Now that we're all kind of you know, inside catching up and binge watching everything. What, what should we be watching? Uh, guys, um, I just finished that. Uh, what have you watched lately? I just finished that six episode, uh, McMillian. Oh, I just finished McMillian yesterday. That? Yeah. I just finished it last night. So oh my God. Cra- See, I love documentaries. Yeah, was- so, I mean, that was just pff, one of my faves. Yeah, that was great. Uh, the outsider, um, yeah. have you, uh, seen Mrs. Maisel, the fabulous Mrs. Maisel or whatever? No. Was that good? Oh, it's so good. I think you would really like that one. Okay. Like a lot. Yeah. yeah I, I want to say, I want to say, I want to say that my wife had gotten into that. Um, uh, you know, a lot of my, I don't get to watch a lot of shows. I have to really, you know, it has to be really something that's compelling to me. Um, because most of my time now I'm, I'm just using to kind of go back in the studio and just keep that, you know songwriting and and production muscle uh moving and i also we touched on a little bit you know the 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 industry the way it is now i mean you just you know when you think about no strings attached i mean we were like going in to make an album and i also you know with my solo career as well like it it was always like make an album and now it just feels like yeah, make an album, but also don't, you know, just make a bunch of music. Yeah. And, uh, so I think now more than ever, I'm probably making more, I'm probably writing and, and recording more songs mm. than I, than I ever have. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and I can't let you go, of course, without talking about trolls, which is coming out. What is, when does it release again? Oh, you know, it's, it's, it's funny. We're having this conversation because I, I got, we got the word last week yeah. that Universal, it's going to be one of the first, sort of simultaneous, you know, all platform streaming uh thing just because of the, you know, what's what we've what we st- what we're experiencing with this, you know, health crisis. Um well, I think that's yeah, such a I, great idea because we all need entertainment right now and we're all glued to our television. So, I love the fact that y'all are going to let us be able to watch it like right now because I don't want to wait, you know. I want to watch it right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, honestly, that's, the, that whole franchise, I mean, it was, it was a little bit of serendipity for me, um, getting to work on, getting to work on that, um, you know, after having, uh, you know, after becoming a father, after having a child, um, you know, and now to go back and, you know, I mean, we've spent, you know, these songs that, that we've just put out, I mean, these songs were written, you know, a year and a half ago, a year ago, you oh, wow. know, we've been working on all the music for, for, for this film for, for so long. So it's, it's exciting to, to have people see it in context with the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I love it. It's, it's, um, 
it's a, it's a great family movie. For sure. Yeah. And you got to write for a lot of great artists on this soundtrack, um, which you've been working on for so long. Uh, is there anyone that really stood out to you? Like, Oh my gosh, they really, that was just really fun to work with like Anderson pack or. Yeah. Well, Anderson and Anderson for sure. SZA for sure. Um, you know, there were a couple of pinch me moments where it's like, you never thought you'd be able to reinterpret and, 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 you know, remix and master Atomic Dog with George Clinton. And then it happened on a Trolls <laughs> sequel. Kind of, Why not? You're like, you're like, you're like, wait, am I high right now? You know, like, it's, one of those, it's like one of those weird things. Mm. Um, but I, I could tell you too, definitely. I mean, obviously, you, you know, Kelly. Clarkson as well as, as as I do. I mean, she's she, that voice as well. What a force! Right. So um, to have her involved with the movie was amazing. Yeah. Um, I can honestly say, you know, I, I you know, Anderson, Pack, and SZA are probably um, they definitely stand out. Um, at when I first think about that question, as people that I definitely I'm going to continue to work with. Yeah. Um, hopefully if they'll have me, um, <laughs> I have a feeling that I'll, that I'll be there. Yeah. Um, I have um, to say congratulations. Cause you were the first instinct member not to say anything really pervy on the show. Um, everyone had their <laughs> moments. So yeah, you, you win for that. Unless you want to say something crazy right now, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You just said you said to say something really pervy. Yeah, everyone has said something like really pervy. Like it, it all comes down. Chris is now like Jizz Kirkpatrick or something. Um, there was a lot of Jizz talk. Yeah, but you you were oh, you, gosh. Kept, you kept it clean this whole time, Justin. Look at you. Okay, all right. Well, <laughs> then, then then let's let's end this thing quickly before I start I know, right? to digress. <laughs> all right. Well, this is how I want to end it. So, of course, I have to ask the ultimate question: What do you say when people ask? Okay. Is there going to be a reunion? What's happening with InSync in the future? What would you like InSync to be like in the future? Uh, right. Um, I, you know, I just told my honest answer. I, I really don't. I don't know. I think that when I think about that that uh, question, there's a lot of it. There's a there's a lot that comes up in my mind that is exciting. Um, but I think it's. I think really it boils down to, you know, obviously. 20 years is, is a long time. And I think we all have, you know, we all have lives and families and, and I think, you know, you know this too. And I hope I'm not being too personal. I hope the other guys would appreciate that I'm saying this, but obviously very recently we've all had, you know, when I tell people that we have an ongoing group text, it's like people smile so good yeah. to know that we're, we've all remained such good friends over the years. Yeah. Um, and it really is a brotherhood, you know, it's a, it's something that's kind of unexplainable to people. Um, but, but, but what I was going to say is, you know, as, as you know, even recently in our group text, we've talked about, no, let's actually get together and just talk, mm -hmm. you know, just, just, just talk. And I think that, I think that's probably a good place to start, uh, to see, where everyone's heads and hearts are. Um, I think when you, when you, uh, you sort of ask a little more specific part of the question, which is like, what does the future look like? I think, I think if we, you know, if we do something, uh, we, we have to figure it out. You know, it has to figure out what it sounded like, what it felt like, what it, you know, how, how we would incorporate what we've already done, you know, and um, and I think at the end of the day, it comes down to you know, timing uh, for everybody, and 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 just sitting down and, and I don't know, seeing what it all means. Well, I have a feeling we're all going to have plenty of time to think about this over the next few months. Um, and I just want to say thank you so much for doing this. Uh, I think it's been such a fun week getting to hear all the, you know, the deep answers that you're giving. It's, it's been a lot of fun. And every single guy has been a different interview. Like it really, everyone has been, so, right. yeah, it's been so different 
But I just want to say, I'm you know, sure. super proud of everything that you've been able to accomplish. I'm super proud of uh, the, thanks, the dad that you have become. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's nice to know that, you know, that, you know, when family members grow up, they become really, you know, amazing people. And yeah, you're, you're a good one. Well, thank you so much. I mean, well, listen, you know, when you're, when you're ready for that whole dad life thing, <laughs> but, but um, we're working on it. Know, I, I, okay. Well, Hey, I'm going to send you some good vibes then. I, um, I, I'll say this too. Like, I, you know, over the years, like getting to know, it's, it's interesting. Like, I feel like I've gotten to know everybody more individually Definitely. over the last, you know, five years even. Um, That's what I was saying because also because like, you know, my relationship with JC, I was talking about, I was like, when, during the band, like you and him had a bond, of course, because y'all were on the show, but, you know, he was really, uh, you know, more quiet and, you know, didn't really like to go out much. So we didn't bond as right. much as I bonded with him after the group, actually, because I, I get to run him to him so right. much more now. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's definitely, you know, it's one of those things that, that, um, I feel like when you know when we're all together, there's you kind of get this energy that comes right back. Um, but also, there's just so many layers of life that we've that we've encountered and that are you know engraved on us as well. Um, so it's cool to see who everybody has really become, and and um, I'm I I, uh, I I love what we've all shared in our life what we continue to share. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it definitely feels, it definitely feels like um, now more than ever, just between the five of us that there's just, there's, there, there, you know, there's no opportunity for all the BS that, that can surround mm-hmm. something that becomes so big yeah, yeah. Um, that we all can just like really experience our friendship with each other. Mm-hmm. So that's something I'm really proud of. Nice. All right. What would you like to leave your fans out there? What do you want to say? Oh gosh. Um, the first thing that came to mind was wash your hands. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yes. That's the um, one golden rule right now. Uh, man, I'm listen, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to you. Thank you for, for, for having me. And like I said, I, I I'm sure the other guys would, would agree that, that, this is such a unique platform that you have for us to be able to, um, you know, say, say things that, that are, that are layered and, and, and kind of, you know, um, like I said, it's a shared experience. So you're able to, to really verbalize that bond. Right. So, and listening to an interview is way better than reading an interview. That's for sure. It's, it's, you hear it from the horse's yeah, mouth. Yeah, I think so. You get, you get to actually hear what people have to say. Yeah, exactly. So I appreciate this, this, uh, opportunity, man. Well, I appreciate you and, uh, well, enjoy the, the alone time with the family. Uh, I hope you don't get too stir crazy, but give them all my love. And, uh, hopefully I'll be seeing you soon when all this lifts. Yeah, man. Likewise, best to your family and your loved ones. And, um, you know, I guess everybody be, sta- be, uh, be, be safe out there. Be, be mindful and conscious uh, of uh, of where. Be mindful and conscious of where you're getting your 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 news and yeah. and, and try to do your part. Exactly. Good. Good choices. All right, man. Thank you so much. I love you. We'll see you soon. All right. Love all you right. too, buddy. All, all right. right. Later. All right, Bye. guys. That is all the show I have for you today. Uh, it has been such a fun week. Reminder: tomorrow uh, we're going to have our quick fire questions from Giggles and Peach Keen. Uh, so I'm excited to see what the guys say there. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of funny stuff. And also, don't forget you can share this podcast with all your friends and family. People need something to listen to right now. We're here every single day for you. We're an entertainment news show that comes to you every single day. So uh, follow us on our social medias at The Daily Popcast um, and share this around. I would really appreciate it. So guys, be good to each other. Don't drink and drive out there. Wash those hands. Be good to those animals. And we'll see you actually tomorrow on a special edition of The Daily Popcast. Bye. The Daily Popcast is executive produced by me and Sim Sarna. Written and produced by Jess Keener, edited by Crystal Hill, and music by Josh Cook and Alicia Eagle. The Daily Popcast is a Cloud 10 production and is powered by Simplecast.